So far in these videos, we've only considered vectors as directed line segments in two dimensions. However, directed line segments in three dimensions are also vectors. We can describe them in a very similar way. So let's use this set of axes. No, we now have three axes, all at right angles to each other. In order to describe a vector in terms of its components, we use unit vectors in the directions of these three axes. The ones in the x and y direction are usually denoted by i and j, just like in two dimensions, and the one in the new z direction is denoted by k. So, let's move a distance a along the x-axis and distance b along the y-axis to this point here. Then let's move distance c along the z-axis and consider the directed line segment from the origin to this point. We'll call it v. To make this image clear, let's complete this rectangle. So v is an example of a vector in three dimensions and we can describe it in terms of its components as ai plus bj plus ck. We could also denote v as a column vector, like this. Now, we can no longer describe the direction of v with a single angle, but we can still calculate its length, or magnitude. We can make a right angle triangle with v as the hypotenuse, where the other two sides are these two green lines. We know that the length of one of these lines is c, but what is the length of the other? Well, using Pythagoras' theorem, we can deduce that it is the square root of a squared plus b squared. So, using Pythagoras' theorem once again, we can calculate that the magnitude of v is the square root of, well, it's the square root of the square root of a squared plus b squared, all squared. This is the length of the first line, squared, plus c squared. This looks complicated, but it in fact simplifies to the square root of a squared plus b squared plus c squared, which is much simpler. So, calculating the magnitude of a vector in three dimensions is analogous to the two-dimensional case. Other operations are also very similar to the two-dimensional case. Let's take two vectors a equal to 4i plus 5j plus 5k and b equal to minus 6i plus 3j plus 0k which is actually just minus 6i plus 3j. On our axes these vectors would look like this. We'll add in some red lines to clarify the diagram. Now it would be very difficult to draw a plus b on our diagram but to calculate it mathematically is easy. It's just 4 minus 6i plus 5 plus 3j plus 5 plus 0k, which equals minus 2i plus 8j plus 5k. Likewise, the scalar product, which we introduced in two dimensions in the previous video, is calculated in the same way as in that video. We multiply the corresponding components together and add the results up. So we get that a dot b is 4 times minus 6 plus 5 times 3 plus 5 times 0, which equals minus 24 plus 15 plus 0, which is minus 9. So though it's difficult to accurately draw vectors in three dimensions, Describing them mathematically is no harder than in the two-dimensional case.